So we have before us three concepts. One, space and time form an absolute reference grid independent of all observers. Two, speed is always relative to a given observer who is treated as stationary. Three, Lorenz's constant, c equals 300,000 kilometers a second, is always the same for all observers. 1 and 2 are consistent with each other. That's just Newtonian mechanics. But 3 directly contradicts 1. Naturally, most physicists sought for ways to reject 3 so that they could stick with Newton. But Albert Einstein, in his theories of relativity, made the bold move to reject 1. For Einstein, there is no absolute impersonal reference grid for space and time. Space and time are not independent of the observer. Rather, space and time warp and change around the observer in order to accommodate the constancy of light speed. It is not that the speed of light somehow increases to compensate for my speed, Rather, space and time warp around me in such a way to prevent me from ever reaching light speed. As I accelerate, the universe grows longer around me, and things seem to age at a faster rate than me. And on the flip side, from a stationary point of view, I would appear to compress in space and age much slower. The upshot of this is that it gets exponentially harder for me to cross the necessary distances in enough time to keep up with light, because distances literally become longer while time gets shorter and more rapid. It's a bit like the Greek myth of Tantalus, who was punished in hell by being placed up to his waist in a pond beneath a fruit tree, and every time he reached up to pluck a fruit to eat, the tree branches moved in proportion to his effort so that the, tr the fruit was always just out of reach. The same thing happened with the water. He would try to drink it, but as he reached down, it would drain away in proportion to his efforts. This is why an infinite amount of energy is needed to reach light speed, because nothing less than infinity can get you to the top of an exponential curve. Unimpeded light meets this requirement because light is electromagnetic energy, i.e. energy itself, unburdened by mass, which, by the way, is why electrons are called massless particles. This is where the energy mass equivalence comes from. E equals mc squared. For Newton, mass is simply inertia, or something's resistance to changes in speed, i.e. to acceleration. Einstein elaborates on this idea by saying that all matter is actually light, or energy, but it's entrapped in such a way that the energy it would normally be expending to maintain light speed is instead manifested as mass or inertia against light speed. That's partly my own interpretation, but you get the idea. Hence, when you cut the Gordian knot of the atomic nucleus, you release the immense tension required to suppress light speed and maintain the energy as mass. One more point before moving on, a less misleading name for the speed of light is the speed of causality. However, note what this name implies, that for something to cause something else to happen, that is to exert energy or work upon it to get it to move, they have to touch or intersect in space and time. So, if you use a remote key to unlock your car from across the parking lot, that's not really spooky action at a distance. All that's happening is EM waves, i.e. light waves, are sent to the car at nearly the speed of light. They hit some special receptor, which then triggers the unlocking mechanism. If you tried to unlock your car from a light year away, assuming you had a car unlocker that was powerful enough, it would still take a whole year before your car unlocked. There is nothing you can build or design to circumvent this speed limit of events. 
no given cause in the universe can have its effect at a rate faster than 300,000 kilometers a second, not even light.